Hello and welcome. In today's video we're looking at one of London's newest museums which just so happens to be one of, if not the first, police station in London. We're going to look at a quick history of policing in London and why Bow Street was so important and then of course we'll look inside the new museum as well. My name's Katie, the founder of Look Up London, and I run public walks and private tours across the capital, specialising in walks for Londoners. If you want to find out more about these walks, you can look at the link in the description. It might sound hard to believe, but until the 18th century, London had no official police force. Parish constables watched over their local area, and in serious breaches of the peace, the army would be called in. With London's population growing, rising to about 700,000 by the mid-18th century, crime was also on the rise. But the watchmen who were charged with catching, thieves, petty criminals, were often pretty elderly and not so light on their feet. The other option was so-called thief takers. Now these were often criminals themselves who used their knowledge and their networks to blackmail other criminals into coming forward. But the whole system was pretty corrupt and pretty ineffective. In 1740, a local magistrate called Thomas de Vale opened a court at his house at number four Bow Street. You could call him a vigilante who was acting as police officer, judge and jury and was sometimes accused of bribery and corruption. His attempts at a crime crackdown ended when he died in 1746. Number 4 Bow Street then became the home of Henry Fielden, a novelist and fellow magistrate. He wanted to continue de Vale's work. He established the Bow Street Runners, a local team of constables to try and catch London's criminals. The torch then passed to his half-brother, John Fielding, nicknamed the Blind Beak of Bow Street. John had lost his sight in an accident and used his impressive hearing to recognise the voice of criminals. When John successfully got funding from the government, Bow Street became the headquarters of policing in London. They also used the next door pub as a makeshift police station, the cellars handily transforming into cells, and Bow Street continued to grow in size and reputation. It was only in 1829 that the Metropolitan Police Act was passed, establishing the first true modern police force, and the Bow Street runners and their horse patrol joined forces with them in 1837. So let's have a look inside the museum. Along Bow Street in Covent Garden stands a grand Victorian building that's now become the Nomad Hotel. It's only some of the clues on the outside that hint at the history, but you need to make your way to the side of the building and you'll spot the museum's entrance opposite the Royal Opera House. As you first enter, you can see the Bow Street Magistrates Court dock. This is the original dock from Court No. 2. Throughout its history as a magistrate, Bow Street has heard some of the most famous cases in London. These include against the East End gangsters and convicted murderers, the Cray Twins, Oscar Wilde's trial for gross indecency in 1895, from Dr Crippen, who murdered his wife Cora and buried her under the basement of their house, as well as Sylvia and Christabel Pankhurst, charged with breach of the peace in 1908 whilst protesting for the votes for women. The first room in the museum tells the story of the Bow Street runners, including some of the items used by officers. To us today, they look extremely low-tech. It's just a lantern and a rattle used for attracting attention. Although the first Bow Street runners had no official uniform, there's an illustration of John Townsend, a famous runner, wearing an eye-catching yellow waistcoat. By 1805, some uniforms had started to be worn, and one of them is featured here, a navy coat and red waistcoat, which gave the officers the nickname Robin Redbreasts. But the main highlight is the original cells. As you'd expect, they're pretty basic inside, but include most of the original features, including two buttons on the wall. These were for getting attention and, importantly, flushing the toilet. However, the toilets could also be operated from the outside as a safeguard against any malfunction, and if you look up above the cells, you can see the systems. 
Inside each of the cells, the history of the station continues and you can hear stories of some of the people who worked here. In 1967, the Metropolitan Police's first black police officer, Norwell Roberts, was posted at Bow Street and he served here until 1972. As an aside, the first known black police officer is actually from far older. This was a man called John Kent, who served in the Carlisle City Police Force as far back as 1837. There's also plenty of stories of female officers too. It started with two female matrons who oversaw the care of female prisoners from 1897. It was following the First World War that women started to appear in uniform, and they were led by Superintendent Sophia Stanley from 1919. They were given different uniforms from the men, often impractical and sometimes actually dangerous, as told in the audio recordings that you hear going through the cells. The women were usually expected to just look after the women or children that arrived in the station. It was only in 1973 that women could apply for the same roles as men within the Metropolitan Police. There's also a slightly ridiculous display with a male and female issued truncheons, the female one at the front being far shorter and daintier. The last room that you can go inside is known as the tank. It was a safe space mainly for men to sober up after too much fun out in the West End. It could house multiple occupants, each of them sharing just the one toilet, so you'll be thankful to know it's been completely sanitised for our visits today. The police station eventually closed in 1992, and the magistrates called shortly afterwards in 2006. For the first six months, the Bow Street Police Station is open Friday to Sunday, but I've linked to their website with more information about opening times and ticket prices. It's also worth popping next door to have a sneaky look inside the new Nomad Hotel. Before you go in, take a closer look at the lanterns. Since 1861, London's police stations traditionally had blue lights outside, but Bow Street was the only central one to have white lights. No one really knows the reason why, but one theory is that Queen Victoria didn't like the blue when she visited the Royal Opera House opposite. Inside the hotel, you can see the beautiful Skylet restaurant. This once was a car park for police bands. Elsewhere in the hotel, you can also find more original cells, this time used by women. I'm sure the actual hotel rooms are far more comfortable. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do let me know in the comments if you have or are planning to visit the museum and if you're feeling brave, maybe own up to spending a night in the tank as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll be back next time for more of London's hidden history.